Hello, and welcome to how to use the vSAN Quick Sizer. Let's get started. After you've logged in, there's two different sizers. There is the traditional vSAN ready node sizer, where you input a list of requirements, often collected using various collection tools, or there is the quick sizer. This is a bit of a reverse sizer workflow where you work backwards from a, what would this configuration provide in terms of capacity? Let's take a look first at the quick sizer. Now the quick sizer can also be reached from the top menu bar here. The first selection you'll note is the vSAN OSA versus the ESA. What I wanna do is actually look at vSAN ESA for a given configuration. And the first thing that I strongly recommend you do when using the ESA configurations is make sure to change the failure protection method to the RAID 5 or RAID 6, depending on your cluster size. Now in this case, I only have three servers. So with ESA, I can do RAID 5 because it uses a two plus one stripe, um, unlike the OSA where that would have had a four host minimum. And even on a three node cluster, you should always select RAID 5 for ESA. It is actually faster, more performant, and more capacity efficient than using the RAID 1 protection style with ESA. Now, if I wanted to look at using, say, the RAID 6, I would grow this to a larger cluster, maybe let's add seven hosts. And then at that point, additional protection styles become available. So in this case, I could select RAID 6. Now, for the compression ratio, I'm going to set this. Uh, I know my data is somewhat compressible. And do note that compression is better on express storage architecture. Uh, then the OSA, there's some additional improvements. It can be up to, and I say up to, obviously, um, with an asterisk, but up to eight times more efficient. So there's there's quite a lot of additional capability here. And with that, then that will adjust the amount of overheads that go into this configuration. Now we can look at some specific configurations, and we can even do some tweaks. Um, so let's go look at, um, in this case, let's look at two, um, a two-node or a a a seven uh, node configuration. I'm gonna use um, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HPE. I'm gonna use the DL380, uh, which I know has quite a lot of drive bays. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go all the way up to, um, let's go to 16 drives and a host. Uh, typically your two rack unit servers can hold up to 24. And with this, uh, for my capacity drives, do note with ESA, your minimum uh, that is supported or will be certified is generally 1.6. Uh, I'm going to use some th uh, 3.84s, and then I'll calculate what this configuration would look like in terms of capacity. And so I can see there's there's actually quite a lot of capacity in this cluster. Um, the usable capacity after the various overheads uh, for things is you know better clo getting close to half a petabyte. And if I want to download a presentation here or a recommendation, I can actually get a PDF of that. You know, as as different options. And here we can look at what that presentation looks like. You can also get this in a PowerPoint format. So if you need to do a presentation uh, to a customer of what this will look like, that'll help. And I'm wrong. This is only PDFs. Okay. Ah, blah. At this point, you can download a PDF. Um, and with this PDF, you'll have a, an outline of what a presentation would look like to basically explain. So here you'll have a quick overview of the differences of ESA, what this configuration, what our license requirements are. Remember, ESA requires a minimum of an advanced license and what that usable capacity and the memory would look like on these configurations. Now here I have selected a similar configuration. I have 16 drives and a deal um, 380 system again that I'm going to select. In this case, I'll have uh, two disk groups so I can get my 16 um, devices. And I'll have seven hosts um, and selecting the same size capacity device. I'm going to have a more conservative compression uh, ratio just because the OSA compression is not quite as effective as the ESA. And looking at that, I'll be able to look at the uh, available capacity um, after overheads in regards to this. So the usable capacity, as you can see here, is actually a good bit less. It's actually less than half. Um, I have used the RAID 1 since I'm trying to get better performance in this configuration. Um, do note that the RAID 5 or RAID 6 on ESA will actually outperform 
uh, RAID 1, it, it does some advanced things in terms of write coalescing, so we don't necessarily have to do that. If we were willing to accept a less performant configuration and go to RAID 6, we would see that the capacity that's available is, is still fundamentally less um, than what we would get just by going to ESA with similar capacity type drives. And the reason for that is a couple fold. One, we're not having to use uh, cache devices anymore at ESA. So all drives are, config are configured and providing storage. Um, two, you know, as I mentioned, you can also use RAID uh, 5 and 6 in all cases outside of 2 node. 2 node, you'd still use RAID 1. Um, versus with legacy OSA, we might be tempted on write heavy workloads still to use RAID 1. And in addition, the compression ratio is more efficient. 